At the addition of a new mark to the history of the dawning of the world, eyes look anew at the sun's spellbinding gleam, tongues whisper a legend, and existence once again begins at Mount Ere. According to various legends in the recited narration of Noah's Flood, the progeny of mankind disembarked the ark sitting on Mount Ararat and spread out over the face of the earth. The passage of the geographically situated historical Silk Road through the province of Ararat, that is modern-day Ara, is a fact sufficient to establish its centuries of precedence. Along with this, Ara was the location of the most important of the roads, which made it easy for the hordes originating in Central Asia and Persia passed to Anatolia. Being the first stop of the arriving migration and flow to East Anatolia, it became a center of passing civilizations and cultures. The oldest society to settle in Ara in its environs was the Hurrians. After that, for approximately a 500-year period, the Urartians came on the scene and thrived. The evidence for the existence of the historical structures belonging to that period continues to our day in their ruins. The most vivid example of this being the Urartian rock tombs. After the Urartians, the Cimmerians, and for two centuries the Medes as well, made Ara their homeland. Later in succession, Ara opened its embrace to various cultures and was amended to the kingdoms of Alexander's Macedonians, the Romans, the Persians, the Armenians, the Nomadic Turks, the Arsaks, the branch of the Oz Turks settling in the west, and the Artakasias. In the 11th century, it changed hands between the Byzantines, Turks, and Arabs a few times and came under the control of the Seljuk Turks in 1064. On August 26, 1071, with the defeat of Byzantian Empire Roman Diogen in Malazgrit by the Seljuk Sultan Alparslan, the passing flow of the Turkish Boilar settled in Ara and made it their home at the beginning of their passage to Anatolia. In Ara, with its exceptionally rich past, it is still possible to come upon a great number of sculptures of horses, sheep, and rams that were done in the periods of the Karakoyun and Akkoyun dynasties. In an analysis of the period of the Ottoman Empire as well, attesting to its strategic importance in the Ottoman-Russian wars, Ara became the theater of large battles, military occupation, and incurred great damage. In World War I, war casualties, battles, and violent confrontations did not leave the region. And finally, in campaigns for national defense lasting from 1892 to 1918, Ara's soil was reclaimed from the Russians and Armenians at a great cost of life. Upon the arrival of the period of the Republic, despite the great destruction which was experienced by Ara, the exteriors of the historical structures were modernized. The hub of the province was moved from East Beyazit to Karakose, that is today named Ara. Administrative districts were established and this border city at the foot of cloud-covered Mount Ararat at last embraced peace and tranquility. As you can see, in every period of history having strategic and geopolitical importance and completely worthy of consideration as a passageway of civilizations, Ara, with its geographical makeup, is very interesting. In the east of Anatolia, Ara, bordering Iran, is overflowing with geographical distinctiveness. With its high and steep physical constitution, Ara harbors our country's highest volcanic peaks, Mounts Ararat, Supan, Tenderek, and Kosada. The borders of the states of Turkey, Iran, and Nakhchivan find their meeting places at Mounts Ararat and Little Ararat. Little Ararat is in the east and Ararat, Turkey's highest mountain with an elevation of 5,137 meters, is in the west. On both of their slopes are myriad parasite firs. Capturing a single complete view of Ararat's main summit constitutes the most magnificent views of the world's volcanoes. The skull-capped shaped glacier at the mountain's peak makes Ararat appear to be wearing a white crown summer and winter alike. The crowds frequently covering the pinnacle render an even more spectacular view. Always snowy, always cloudy, its head always in the heavens, its enchanted white pinnacle ceaselessly suspended like a cloud 
in appearing to be completely severed from the face of the earth, legendary era has pervaded the folk songs and become the inspiration of lovers. Our country has touristic worth due to Mount Ararat, the focal point of interest for the whole world. The peoples living in history's various periods look at this magnificent mountain as a hallowed edifice. Furthermore, owing to the probe for the evidence for the flood of Noah's day and Noah's Ark on Ararat, one of the very few of the world's potential sites, foreign mountain climbers and religiously minded men have become visitors. Mount Ararat also finds an exceptional place in Turkish history and literature. With its singular mass suddenly ascending, making it exceptional among all of Europe's mountain peak formations, Ararat havens a view that is so imposing and so awe-inspiring that it seems almost to cry out that no such view could exist anywhere on the planet. Ararat, like two young eagles ascending to the heavens, naturally is the most frequent topic of legends. Of these, the most well-known are the legends of Mem and Zin, Asla with Kerim, Ahmed Ihani, Siabend and Hege, the two fractitious old ladies, Adam and Eve, and Noah's Ark. In the last two centuries, the interests of geographers and mountaineers have fallen upon Ararat, a mountain possessing sacred and towering significance as previously asserted. For reasons such as the beliefs that the Garden of Eden, where Adam and Eve lived, was located in Aras, the valley north of the mountain, and that Noah's Ark landed here after the flood, such as the indication of the name of the peak where traces of Noah's Ark are located as Mount Ararat by the Old Testament and Mount Judy according to the Quran and such as the myriad legends finding their sources here, Ararat has become the scene of many expeditions and investigations. Centuries before, scholars began to search for Noah's Ark and their studies all led them to a single location, Mount Ararat. In the sphere of probes conducted to find traces of Noah's Ark, the first scientific expedition to Mount Ararat was conducted in 1829 by the Russians, while the second was carried out by Frederick Parrott of Dorpat University and his team beginning the 19th of August the same year. Upon Parrot's first arrival to the summit, traces of the Ark surfaced. In 1876, the English Lord Bryce found pieces of wood at an elevation above 4,000 meters on the mountain. And in 1887, John Joseph Nori and his team came across a ship half covered with ice embedded in rocks. Then in 1976, the Russian pilot Vladimir Raskovsky claimed that he saw remains of a ship on the northeast face of the mountain. After 1887, up to the period of the Turkish Republic, there was no Turkish expeditionary initiative to Mount Ararat, the home of so many researchers. For the first time in August of 1934, Turkey's border mountaineering brigade near Mount Ararat succeeded in ascending the mountain. Furthermore, on the 11th of September 1959, Mapping Captain Isan Durapinar came across a curious spectacle while carefully examining the photometric mapping captures of the East region. These shots testify to the probability of the existence of Noah's Ark. Actually, while it's debated as to whether it's Noah's Ark or the pattern in the soil where Noah's Ark rested on the ground, there is one reality. This is that in spite of it being in a landslide area where there are shifting soils, its existence as a natural memorial has been protected without in any way disturbing its form. Thus, in the valley that is located on the northeastern side of a town named Uzingili, formerly Doa Beazet Masher, there are remains of a boat that bewilders people. In the end, this mountain where important events such as these have transpired also brings with it great enterprise from the point of view of the mountaineering and tourism sectors. Presently in its majestic form, Mount Ararat has realized its potential of becoming a skiing resort, making way for more comfortable, more pleasurable, and more exciting activities for all visitors Turkish and foreign. On November 17, 2004, by decision of the Board of Ministries, the 260,832-acre area comprising Mount Ararat and Little Ararat was declared a national park. Mount Ararat, along with its well-deserved fame at both national and international levels, owing to the value of a number of its natural resources, the characteristics of its unmatched landscape, and its endemic plant and animal species, is our country's biggest climbing center. In the winter months for professional climbers and in the summer months for amateurs, it is a center of enchantment for ultimate titillation and the living out of unforgettable memories. This condition certainly brings a very colorful social life and an economic vivacity to the people of the region. Also at the South Rock Ski Resort, 25 minutes removed from Ara Airport, 
harsh winter conditions are turned into recreation, just as all of the region's ski resorts have become centers of potential alternatives. The hotel at the ski center is situated 500 meters from the district's highway and in the future the length of its ski slope will yield a great contribution to the economic input of the region. Of course, this is not the sole component in the province of Ar rendering it a place worth seeing. There is Mount Tenderek, which became extinct at recent geological time, yet possesses the characteristics of a new volcanic mountain and its highland plateaus. Mount Supan, the third highest peak in our country with the form of an extinct volcano, and Mount Kosada, ascending in a great cone shape. There's the Turkish-Iranian Transit Highway Pass that was known as Rest Harrow until 1976. Mount Tahir, the vast plains, the beautiful highland plateaus, each one that greets guests with a vista of the natural wonder that comprises Ara. Of course, this together with the examples of the way of life strewn around the foot of the mountains. In the geography of Ara, which is situated in the mountains, there are scores of passes, gaps, valleys, and fertile plains. Naturally, this precipitous landscape has the effect of limiting great economic development. The most common realm of endeavor falls to agriculture, the people of Ar being tightly bound to animal husbandry and farming. In this way, Ar has become the center for animal husbandry in Turkey, thus the source of their basic livelihood. Industrial products and goods are generally acquired from distant provinces, while the industrial establishments which do exist in the region are active in the area's main sphere of livelihood with a focus upon farming and animal husbandry. In Ara, no matter how difficult the climate and living conditions become, there is a mysterious spirit in the people living here to look with more vitality, to exalt in its passionate history, to think about the things they have lived through, and to have the imaginative strength to take an authentic approach to life. Ishak Pasha Palace With magnificent and unique architecture, monumental crested doors, a harem chamber, a mosque and hundreds of rooms, Isak Pasha Palace is truly a masterpiece worth seeing. One cannot help but be filled with admiration at the sight of this splendid edifice resembling an eagle's nest with its surroundings in wonderful harmony. Isak Pasha Palace is located 7 kilometers northeast of Doho Beyazit in a fairy tale like land. Old Beyazit, the location of the ruler, and was established on top of a high hill carrying with it colorful history with great significance. On the subject of its architecture and construction, in spite of many legends that are told amongst the people, nothing is known for sure. Of those buildings that were constructed in Ara during the Ottoman time, it has gone on record as the biggest and the most important architectural structure. Having been carefully planned so as to be the most ideal form for a palace in all its divisions, Ishak Pasha Palace, from the points of view of both history and art history, possesses unmatched worth. To understand its charm, it is necessary to see and walk around the palace at close proximity. East Beazit Citadel Five kilometers east of Doa Beazit, at a place named Beleburch that is in the northeast of Old Beazit, East Beazit Citadel today exists in virtual ruins. In spite of this, graves and remains belonging to ancient times possess an enigma sufficient to impress visitors. History's architectural legends in Ara still preserve their charm. Behold, Old Bayezid Mosque. At Bayezid Citadel's south flank, acknowledged to have been constructed by Selim I, Old Bayezid Mosque, made of hewn stone with a square plan and single dome construction, is still standing perfectly upright and in such a state that it can be used. The mosque's interior form, considered to be extremely harmonious and well planned, truly raises one's passion for history. Another living city in Ara, Mea Caves. The historical remains of settled caves, places of refuge, temples, places of worship, and rooms carved out of rock, making up the view of an ancient city that is 12 kilometers from the center, Diadin district, found in Gulbuldin, are extremely interesting. In this city, bearing traces of various religions, the niche of a mosque, stones with crosses, and cemeteries endure. In addition, two ram sculptures removed from here now find their place in the administrative center of the province. Actually, many more traces of ancient life like this exist in Ara. Castles and numerous necropolises belong to the Iron and Bronze Ages. Diverse constructions reflecting the miraculous spirit of the age despite the passage of the centuries. Myriad cities, wealth befitting Ara, 
the portal of civilizations. Taşlı Çay, Balık Lake Citadel, Diyadin Küje, Tokluca Castle, Kızıl Ziyaret Fortress, Empatnos, Aznavur Hill and Girik Hill, an Urarshan temple and palace with their rich findings. Uch Kelisi, a sacred place where Noah's grave is believed to be that remains from before the time of Christ. And Karagos Church in Tutak. Hamur Tomb, a rectangular construction with a mirror vault on the inside and resembling a rigid chamber on the outside. And others. In Ara, the stage of legends and supernatural events, a detail not to be overlooked on your visit is the plane shaped meteor crater Yet another interesting and astonishing thing. Thought to have fallen from the sky in 1892, a great body brought about this crater that is 35 meters across and 60 meters deep. It is considered to be the world's second largest and deepest crater after the crater found in Alaska. In another sense, along with the historical and cultural wealth of Ara, with its beauty of course, it possesses a breathtaking biosphere. Here, the Ice Cave, also known as the Ice Chest and located at the south foothills of Little Ararat Mountain, the Ice Cave displays the quality of a national monument. While hot in the winter and cold in the summer, it possesses a bewitching character. And here, Diyadin, Ara's thermal center. Five kilometers south of the center of the Diyadin district, three thermal springs bearing the names Kopru, Davut, and Yilanla due to the various minerals in their composition, possess restorative and healing properties for illnesses where infection is connected with skin orders, chronic inflammation of the upper respiratory tract, rheumatism, kidney disorders, neurological complications, and women's infirmities. They could be referred to as Aras Pamukkale. Consequently, apart from winter, for visitors, Diyadin Thermal Springs in Ara is a special place, gracious to those who come. Of course, in this short analysis, we become aware of just how much natural beauty there is that can be mentioned throughout our country. For example, looking at the view of Mount Ararat, Baluk Lake gives yet another pleasure. Baluk, or Fish Lake, is located 2,250 meters above sea level, which makes it our country's highest famous lake having a lava dike. The ice-cold springs surrounding the lake give it the most beautiful water in Anatolia. Carp and the famous red scale trout live in the fresh, pure water. Along with Balak Lake's plain natural beauty, for which it has been considered the Abant Lake of eastern Anatolia, it has a small, one acre island that shelters historical remains that can only be reached by boat. So, with this unmatched vista, you can bring to life an unforgettable natural experience of discovery for yourself. We are not just looking at an Ara that has made way for the passage of many civilizations but a land inhabited with people who along with a mysterious spirit like everyone else have difficulties, longings, expectations, traditions, habits, culinary tastes, and many more distinctions. Of course, these distinctions are displayed in the fine designs of the traditional attire, in the loosely woven cotton scarves, in the woolen rugs, and in the embroidered carpets made by the people of Ara. Here it is. The merit of seeing Ara and the lasting memory of its magical ways, the satisfaction of the handmade works of art to your eyes. Kilim and carpet weaving are the most important of the handwork of Ara. Because in Ara winter conditions are harsh, the textile industry dependent on wool generally keeps the hand looms in production connected with tradition in these months. Carpets, pillows, saddlebags, woolen socks and sweaters, Angora mohair gloves and booties are the works of art made by the hands of the people of Ara from wool and by weaving. Also, the strings of the harmal seed are arranged to form geometrical designs with both religious and cultural significance. Decorative objects also have their place among the traditional handicrafts. On the other hand, while art forms the backbone, folk music is also an important piece of the traditional culture. Folk attire and folk games are the finishing components of the culture. This is the easiest and shortest road to the assimilation of the lifestyle that defines Ara. Actually, while listening or reading has the ability to create a silhouette in our mind, in order to live, 
that which we read or hear, it is necessary to actually enter into the situation. With the incredibly beautiful geography, the historical infrastructure, and the opportunities to participate in activities rendering it alive in our time, for those who are not acquainted with art, it is a call to discovery. But for those who are, it characterizes a world of adventure worth remembering. From the perspectives of mountain tourism, winter sports, skiing resorts, thermal springs, history and cultural tours, Ara, with its extremely rich identity, even one time will leave you breathless in an atmosphere that leaves people in amazement. The reality of those retelling would be sufficient to ponder its full connotation. Here it is, the dream of Ara, which you can live, the portal of civilizations, Ara, the excitement of discovery.